Yeah. Whose comeback would enhance the ATL cast more? Okay. Phaedra or Nini? Nini. Nini? Really? Over Phaedra? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, over Phaedra considering you and Phaedra's... Oh, I wouldn't be there if Phaedra was there. So that's all. not even a question. What would it take for you to film with Phaedra? Oh, we're not going to be filming together. Ever? No. Candy Burris is the embodiment of the word multi-talented. From television production to singing, songwriting, acting, and entrepreneurship, she's done it all and then some. With a successful career spanning over four decades, there's not much she can't do. And today, she is stepping into the shade. What's up, roommates? It's your girl, Tembi, and today we have none other than somebody who's giving legs, she gives hips, and she gives body. She is worldwide Miss Candy Burris. <laughs> hey, Candy. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm Stepping good. into the shade during today? I'm scared. Why? Because <laughs> every time I feel like I'm going to say something that is like, uh oh, what am I going to talk about? But you're a straight shooter. Pow, pow. And that gets you in trouble sometimes. <laughs> but you, you always stand by it. But, you know, you have so many jobs. So I kind of just want to start by listing everything you do. You're a musician. You're an actress. You're a YouTuber. You're on Real Housewives. You have two restaurants. You have a clothing store. You have a sex line store. You're a mother. You're a daughter. You're a wife. And you're mm -hmm. a very present and supportive friend. Yeah. All at once. How do you do it? Like, how do you even have the time? Um, well, I mean, that's really kind of hard to say. I think we make time for what we want to make time for, right? Mm -hmm. And I definitely feel like sometimes I'm slacking in areas that I wish I could be doing better at. Like, you know, yeah. of course, every now and then I get, you know, I have a friend or I have a family member that's like, oh, you haven't called and checked on me mm -hmm. or, you know, so I dropped the ball in, you know, certain places just like everybody else. Um... But as far as like the work things that I want to do, it's, it's just kind of like, I just feel like you just got to go hard and go home and in, in the things you want. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess I'm really kind of like a part of team no sleep for real. So what would you say um, is your passion out of all those things, like outside of being a mother? I mean, I feel like it changes depending on the day. Okay. Like I really, really love acting, but I really, really love writing songs too, even yeah. though I haven't really been putting as much time into the songwriting as I used to, mm -hmm. you know. Why not? Just because I get caught up with everything else. And so it's like the little time that I do have free, I don't necessarily want to just sit in the studio. Write a song, yeah. And, um, and that's really the main thing. And so I kind of hate that because it's, um, I, I, you know how certain things you know you're good at? Like right, I know right, I'm right. good at that. Right. And I enjoy <laughs> doing it, but I just haven't been giving it the time that I should. Like what <laughs> What actually drives you though? Is it like the money? Is it the passion? Like what is it that just keeps you trying out different businesses, it's, going and no sleep? It is the accomplishments for me. Mm. And I know everybody has their own thing, right? Some people are like, oh, I want to have this amount of money. I want to have this. I'll, I'll do certain things that don't even come with that much of a check just because mm -hmm. I want to be able to say I did it and did I conquered it. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I want to make history. Right, like, right, I want right. to be able to say I opened that doorway and I love being able to open the doorway yes. and, like, bring and pull all my people up with right, me. Right, like, right. that's a thing for me. Yeah. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I know everybody is... Um, we all trying to make moves as far as, you know, people of color trying to do our thing or whatever. But for me, it's always been a thing that we're like, yeah, nah, we got to <laughs> we got to open this lane up. Right, we're going right. to make this happen. And you and do so, it all. Like you yeah. literally actually do it all, whether it's Broadway acting, you like like everything. Like what haven't you done that you would like to try? Well, just recently, my husband and I produced our own movie. We used our own money, produced the movie, and um, we um, still edit, so we haven't, like, shopped it yet or whatever. But um, it's turning out extremely great. Okay. But I want to, you know, we like to be the bosses of what we do, so I would love to be able to produce our own films and mm -hmm. um, more of that. 
Candy first stepped into the spotlight in the early 90s as part of the iconic singing group x -Gate. And while they've been together for years, their road to success has not come without challenges. Since this interview, drama within the group has left fans wondering about their future. Outside of the world of Escape, Candy became known as a massively successful songwriter, penning hits like No Scrubs and Bills, Bills, Bills. It's both her talent and work ethic that has since cemented her as a force in the music industry. And so you kind of touched on songwriting a little bit. Um, obviously, you've written one of the best songs of all time, No Scrubs, <laughs> among others. Um, and it went against another hit song you had, um, Destiny's Child, Bill, Bills, 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 excuse me, at the Grammys in mm -hmm. 2000. Can you like put into words what that even felt like? That was an amazing feeling. Um, I think people don't even really like look at it. For me, I was coming out of my group mm -hmm. falling apart at the time that um, my songwriting career took off. Mm -hmm. So it was like really like a lifesaver for me in the situation because I, I didn't know what I was going to do next. Yeah. Like I didn't know what was the next move for me and everything. So when the songwriting started taking off, when I, you know, started writing songs for so many different people and everybody was like, yo, we want you to work on this project or that project. It was like, wow. Like it was, it was just an amazing feeling. So to have two songs in the same category, mm -hmm. it was just kind of like saying like God's in. Right. I got you. Right. <laughs> you will be all right. Were you dating someone who was like a scrub or wasn't paying your bills? Like what? Even At the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I had some inspiration. <laughs> I did. Yeah. It, it was, you know, I don't ever want to like drag anybody's name like that. <laughs> he ain't a scrub no more, okay? <laughs> He's not. But at the time, he you was. know, he gave me some inspiration, you know. <laughs> there, um, a dream person you would love to write for? Ooh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I would love to work with um, Rihanna. I've always said that. I think she she has a great ear for picking hits. Yes, she does. So I would love to work with her. Um, oh, Adele. Oh, her voice is so big. Like I actually have a song that I feel like she would just kill. Adele, call Candy, please. Ah! <laughs> Well, I always thought she wrote her own stuff, though, yeah. so I didn't know if, like, she even was open to uh, collaborations or whatever, oh, but, you know. Do this and hear it. We have your uh, girl group, Escape. Yes. So are you guys together? Is everyone together? Not together? <laughs> like, like what, what's going on? That's a trick question. <laughs> no. Um, it's kind of weird. Like, um, we come together, like, we are coming together to do, like, promo stuff to, for our, to promote our show. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, um, just three of us right. are doing shows together right now. Okay. So that would be Tamika Scott, Tiny, and myself. I always say Tamika Scott because right. actually Tiny's real name is Tamika, Tamika as well. Right. So <laughs> it's two Tamikas. But it's Tamika Scott, Tiny, and myself. Okay. Um, we've been doing the shows together. And Tasha, I know she's dropping a, a solo project right okay. now. So, so she's not in the group. I don't want to say she's not in the group. It's not like we had a fish, an official conversation. Yeah. We just haven't been communicating. And was this, <laughs> was this That's due a, to the... That's a more honest way to put yeah. it. Okay, uh -huh. and was this due to the Soul Train Award situation, the dress situation? We were already before? having issues okay. before the Soul Train thing. And, and it was very frustrating for us yeah. when that happened because we felt like, meaning us, meaning me, Tamika and Tiny, because we felt like people were blaming us mm -hmm. for Tasha not... not um knowing what right. we were going to wear and um it just wasn't like that mm -hmm. you know we had already were having issues well before yeah. um all summer basically because you know we started filming the tv show last summer mm -hmm. the entire summer we we could not have a whole conversation without arguing we did not have one conversation during the time of filming without arguing or turning into a problem and so the dress thing, she said there was like a miscommunication. Do you think it was intentional? It was definitely not intentional. Okay. So to be clear. No intentional on her end to wear a different dress. Oh, I don't know about it being intentional or not. We didn't really think of it like that at the time mm -hmm. that it was happening. She had decided she has her own stylist. She didn't okay. want to have the stylist that was styling the group. She wanted her own separate thing, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
Uh, we were last minute, all of us coming to figure out what we were going to wear or whatever. And the stylists were communicating. Okay. I guess um, Jeremy basically said something like we were just going to do like like diamonds or gold and diamonds or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, her stylist said she was wearing gold. Okay. Her dress looks more green than gold. Right. <laughs> that is not our fault. <laughs> We did not. You guys didn't see like pictures. The stylist didn't and see to pictures. be clear, no, she, her stylist sent a picture of the piece of material. <laughs> it was like a little square material. He didn't want us to see her dress. Right. So it was like, well, how are we supposed to know what you got going on? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And um, and to be clear, it wasn't like we took offense to that or anything because this had been happening the entire summer, mm -hmm. like. So we the, wasn't tripping, right. but the fans, when the fans saw it and, you know, her dress looked totally different. Now to be, and this is another example, <laughs> Tamika Scott was actually going to wear a red dress. Okay. But when Tiny had spoke with Tasha about it, Tasha was like, oh, she going to be looking, standing out too much. She going to look too different. Mm. So Jeremy literally made Tamika change her dress from red to, you know, more right. of like the jewel tone right, or whatever, right, silver right. or whatever. So it's like, right. if we would have known what you had on, right. then you could have changed it. Right, right, right. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't do make that. it seem like we were trying to set you up because that mm -hmm. is not the case. Okay, fair. Um, speaking of setups, you kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, Carlos King, you know, essentially take, <laughs> taking your life story, you know, and trying to sell it and make a movie out of it. What is like the update on that now? Where do you guys stand? Are you, have you had a conversation? There is no update. He and I haven't talked about it at all. Um, and it's not like I'm reaching out to him trying to talk about it. Right. That happened some years ago. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because it was when our group first got back together. Remember when we yes. were, um, when we first came back together, what was it, six years ago now? Sometimes, now, yeah. Now it's been like, like six, six years ago. Five, six. When we, that was part of the reason that we ended up coming back together, because we found oh. out somebody was um, doing our life story at some oh. network. Um, and then, you know, uh, we were calling each other like, yo, did you do this? Mm -hmm. Did you do this? You know, and then when I found out. How did you find out? It was random. Because you guys were friends, right? Who? You and Carlos or Todd I and thought Carlos? we was cool. Okay. Todd, Todd and Carlos used to be business partners. I, Damn. I considered, I considered Carlos like a friend. He used to have an office in my office building and everything. Oh, like, wow. yeah, like we, I thought we were cool. Right. Now Todd and, and Carlos did bump heads about some business stuff, mm -hmm. which is, you know, when you have business with y'all do business together, sometimes you're going to mm -hmm. have some issues. Right. Mm -hmm. So they did have some business issues, but in that last season that, um, Carlos had produced, um, we still were being, you know, working together, being cordial or whatever. Mm -hmm. I had to be around him down there five days a week, yeah. right? So we ended up, the filming ended that season, like uh, for Housewives that year, mm -hmm. um, in November. December, so only a few weeks from the oh, time I seen yeah. him, in December, um, I was talking to a friend of mine that was like a producer director. Um, me and Todd was talking to him and we were like, yo, like, um, it would be dope if Escape had a movie like mm -hmm. about our lives or whatever. And our friend was like, oh, they're already doing that movie. And we was like, what like, you what? mean? Who, who's already doing the movie? Right. And he was like, yeah, like, it's, I just took a meeting about that. Like somebody, oh, like he was like, yeah, he told me the network or whatever. And um, I was just like, uh, what? So I called my agent. I'm like, yo, like, what is What's going, going on? on? He looked into it and found out that it was true, that um, the network was doing it. And anyway, it took us a couple more weeks to find out, like, who had put it all together. But it come to find out, it was Carlos. He Damn. was supposed to be producing, director, whatever, the movie. And, and it was crazy because, like, that same, right before I found out, it was him, like, he, one of his producers or people that he worked with had reached out to my mom was like oh yeah you know we're trying to do like a documentary about girl groups we want to get some more information like mm -hmm. to interview my mom like so you're gonna do all of that and you don't even tell me you don't yeah. even talk to me you don't even mention and then at first when I called him he didn't answer my call but then when Tiny and I we went and had like a meeting with the mm -hmm. network because um 
Much love to Kathy Hughes. Okay. Oh, who's over um, TV One? Mm -hmm. Because as soon as she found out about it, she shut it down. Yes. Because she was like, as a black woman, I don't want other black women to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So at that point, yeah. when it started being a problem, then he reached out, and I didn't want to. I didn't answer his call at that point. Right. Being that I'm he like, could. he didn't answer my call when I yeah. called him. <laughs> Considering he's like a, a good producer, if he had asked. Would you have like worked with him on it or is it more? If like it would have been a com like to me, if he would have like reached out in the beginning mm -hmm. before selling it. Right. <laughs> If he had reached out, it would have been a conversation. Yeah. It would have been a, okay, well, let's see how this could work or whatever. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been a get out my face. Yeah. But if you find out like, I mean, it was just hard for me because like, to be clear, he is the same person like, we went hard for him, like mm -hmm. to pro to executive produce. Which was that? Was that Candy's family ski trip? I think we had the first show that he mm -hmm. executive produced. Oh wow! Mom. Like I literally was like going hard with the network. Like yo, y'all gotta let him do yeah. it. And so we we were cool. Like right, we right, had right. like a good relationship. Relationship, I thought, except for the you know the Age the group. drama between him and Tide about business or whatever. Oh. But that was like still like you around me all the time. I'm mm -hmm. seeing you almost every day <laughs> for months. Yeah, it was more so a betrayal. It like, was a serious betrayal for me. I just didn't even understand it. Like mm -hmm. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. But you know, at this point, um, it shut down. Okay. I haven't been talking about it anymore. Like I don't want people to feel like I'm dragging it because mm -hmm. you know how some people are like, oh, she's dragging it. Yeah. I'm not dragging it, You're you asked know, about it. I'm asked about it and the conversation came up. The music industry isn't the only place Candy Burris has made her mark. The multi-hyphenate talent is also well known for her presence in the reality television world as one of the real housewives of Atlanta. From piping hot tea to real life shade, Candy is filling it all. All right, so let's talk about housewives a little bit. <laughs> so Nene said the franchise is starless and that there are, you know, People are not famous, they are known. Do you agree? I don't agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, she, uh, she's so funny to me. Um, <laughs> I don't agree with her. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because, like, I mean, she <laughs> became a star off of the franchise. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, so I don't think it's fair for her to make that blanket comment over mm -hmm. everybody else. Not to mention that there are certain people who came into this with already having fame or success. Mm -hmm. Meaning, Such as myself, Kenya, yes. Yes. Um, you know, Sanya, Ross, um, mm -hmm. Richard Ross, she's a gold, a gold medalist. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's certain people that clearly that could not apply to. But overall, <laughs> um, Bravo fans go hard for yeah, us, you know what I mean? And the ladies of all the different franchises mm -hmm. have definitely, it's, I mean, I would, I would be, I would, I would say, <laughs> and this may be wrong, but a lot of people on Bravo or Bravo liberties are famous than some actual so real yeah. actors or singers. Like yeah. you put them in the same room and see the, the people who I, the the people who support us mm -hmm. who come up be like oh I I watch you da 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 it'll be more people that will come to say that to some people from the housewife franchises mm -hmm. than they would other like movie stars right right so you know I, I can't necessarily agree with that do you think it's fair that um, Robin Dixon you know essentially hid a part of her life and took it to her personal situation to you know get paid for it um and you know in Kenya's situation and you know Robin got like an interview mm -hmm. with Andy and all that stuff and in Kenya's situation when she didn't want to film with her family mm -hmm. or film her wedding she mm -hmm. kind of you know got demoted or lost her peach mm -hmm. do you think that's fair and do you think Robin should be fired I understand what you're saying about when people make choices you know the network mm -hmm. and the fans that watch feel like we are obligated to share everything now, what I will say, I don't, I didn't keep up with all that story about mm -hmm. what was going on with her situation, but I just kind of felt like sometimes things happen between um, seasons. Okay. 
I don't know when that happened to her. So mm -hmm. we weren't necessarily filming when that happened. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, did she need to volunteer it? Right. No. Like if something happened in between seasons and nobody was there mm -hmm. or no, she wasn't being filmed during that time. I don't think she had to wait till the season started and be like, oh, well, you know, a month right, ago right. when I was, you know, yeah. I don't think she necessarily had to do that. But if one of the other ladies brings it up, mm -hmm. you have to address it. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. It's like we can't really um, just go around not addressing things you can't do. Like you can not name names because right. you don't want to like bring other people's names into the show who ain't a part of the show. Mm -hmm. But you have to address the situation. Right. OK. And they're kind of having a conversation about colorism. Um, do you feel as though there is colorism like in you guys' franchise? <laughs> Me and so I had this conversation the other day when we saw it on the blogs. We was laughing because we was like, I guess it ain't that many light-skinned girls on our <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on Housewives of Atlanta. They got all the, uh, oh, the, the green-eyed mandies yeah. are up in D.C. Yeah. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny because um, colorism is everywhere, yeah. but um, realistically, their show, they do only, it looked like when I was looking at their um Mm -hmm. their the couch for when they was doing the reunion yeah. it looked like it was only two dark-skinned girls up there yeah i guess everybody else is light-skinned yeah light-skinned light eyes <laughs> whatever you want to say yeah <laughs> well no isn't that what um robin and yeah, uh giselle called it call, yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah it's only it's a majority mm -hmm. light-skinned women on right. that cast so i guess that's why they have to deal with that mm -hmm. we don't really have as many um really light complexion yeah. um black women on our cast i don't it's not on purpose mm -hmm. it's just not that way so we don't have as much conversation about, about it, yeah. colorism okay that's fair that's fair there are a lot more um chocolate girls like yeah yeah we do chocolate girls is one of the things yeah. in the south <laughs> <laughs> period this is what it is hey it's, it's the a. get uh, with it get with it personal opinions and experiences aside yeah. Whose comeback would enhance the ATL cast more? Shake it up a little bit, make okay. it a little, you know, drama, ratings. Okay. Phaedra or Nini? Nini. Nini? Really? Over Phaedra? Yeah. Like. <laughs> no, because over Phaedra, considering you and Phaedra's. Oh, I wouldn't uh, be there if Phaedra was there. So how? that's not even a question. Think there's, okay, it's rumored that she's coming back. Is that not true? I don't know. I mean, they don't, they ain't talk to me about it. Okay. I don't know. What would it take for you to film with Phaedra? Uh, we're not going to be filming this together. Ever? No. <laughs> I, I, can, I feel um, that. If you had to put a girl group together of the housewives, there's a lot of them who, you know, want to sing and, you know, all of that stuff. Who would you choose to be in the girl group? Ooh, well, definitely um, Drew. I feel like... I love her voice, and I definitely feel like she's, um, the songs that she's been doing mm -hmm. lately are really good. Uh, Candace, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so that's Drew, that's Candace. I guess they're me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And then maybe Erica Jane. Oh, I love Erica, Erica Jane. Yeah. Now, that definitely will add a added twist to it. That's true. Yeah, I went to go see her perform one time and she killed it. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. okay. All of her achievements and career wins, Candy still finds time to devote to being a loving mother, daughter, and wife. From single motherhood to surrogacy, Candy has experienced it all. And she's telling us about what that journey has been like thus far. And um, I know we're short on time, so I wanna you know, touch on like your family and motherhood in general. Okay. Um, so, you hold your own and you know you're not about the bs or any of that like how do you make sure you protect riley who's you know your oldest people have things to say whether it's about like her weight loss or her physical appearance or you know mm -hmm. things like that how do you make sure you like protect her and instill that same confidence you have as she continues to oh grow? my gosh well with riley you know it's always been a constant conversation um, to just talk about the fact like you just cannot care what yeah. other people think of you. You got to build up that tough skin and she is really tough. Mm -hmm. Like we have, um, Riley has grown up on TV. So yeah. she started when she was six, yeah. she's 20 now. <laughs> and, um, yes, yeah, so a lot of the things are frustrating to her, mm -hmm. you know, when people, you know, only want to comment about 
her body. This, this is something she says to me. Mm -hmm. I get sick of people. All they want to do is comment on my body. So meaning, even if you see Riley and you're like, oh my God, girl, you look so good. You lost so much weight. Da, 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 da. If that's the first thing you say, it annoys her. Does she still want to be a lawyer? Is she still in law school? Or? Child, no. <laughs> no. So she has decided, well, she's, she's still at NYU. Okay. She's in her junior year. She's on on time to graduate for mm -hmm. next year but um she's taking music business okay she's that's her major Walking so she's steps. yeah she's no but she wants to do um like um management a and r all that stuff so she works at a record label right now yes. i don't know if she wants me to say but it's a label with like a lot of rappers <laughs> anyway <Okay. laughs> but she works for a label right now and um, she's loving it. Listen, your work ethic, I'm sure, is just going to really just spread, you know, within your kids. So that's going to be fun to I see. Pray, I pray. Yeah. so. <laughs> and what would you say is the biggest or best adjustment, um, one, from raising Riley as a single mother to now having Blaze and Ace with, you know, a present father figure and, you know, mm -hmm. husband and just what has that adjustment been like for you? Oh, it's... um. It's totally different, obviously, when you're able to have um, your husband being a part of, of your mm -hmm. um, children's upbringing. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I feel like I did a great job with Riley, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> She's doing her thing. She's actually, her and her father have recently um, started back communicating. Okay. So, I'm happy for that. Yes. Um, and, I, I mean, I feel like with our younger ones, we are still, you know, trying to just as continue. I want to instill the same thing, mm -hmm. really. It's just now it's just two parents there. Like I want them to both all have that work ethic, have that drive, belief of self, you know, mm -hmm. know that they can do anything um, and just know that they, that we always got their backs. Okay. So you and Todd have different parenting styles and For you know, sure. <laughs> so with, with Riley and with his daughter, Kayla, is it Kayla? Yeah. Um, so with Riley and Kayla, it was like, okay, you're like, I'm going to do what I do over here. You do what you do over there. They'll work together, respect each other, agree to disagree and keep it pushing. But now that you have like two little ones that mm -hmm. are equally, <laughs> equally yours and younger, how do you navigate the different parenting <laughs> styles? It's kind of funny because I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like. I did. I mean, I always said I used to feel like he was really tough on um, Kayla, mm -hmm. but I feel like he's not tough with the little ones. I'm more of the tough <laughs> one. Um, I feel like maybe that'll change as they get older. Yeah, but I think all kids are different, right? Mm. We got to remember, like every kid is going to show different signs of different yeah. things, and um, I feel like with now Blaze ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> uh, that's the one that's going to get me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ace, easy breezy. He yeah. does great in school. He's doing extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. He does all the stuff he's supposed to do. Now, so far, I mean, I pray <laughs> to God that when he get older that he's not yeah. going crazy, but he's like on point, learning multiple languages. Wow. Yeah, he was you know, learning Japanese or something. Chinese. Chinese. Well, Mandarin, excuse me. Okay. Yeah, he still is, and he just added Spanish wow. to it. He's doing his thing. He's already acting. He's in TV shows. He got a TV show that's going to be coming out this wow. year that I'm excited about. Yeah, like he's doing his thing. He's seven. Yeah. Blaze, you know, she's running things. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I don't think I can do the soft parenting thing with right. Blaze. She's different. You know, she's bullying kids yeah. in the, the three-year-old three class. Like, come on, you got to change it up. I'm done. Oh, well, thank you so much, Candy, for stepping into the shade right now. We got to wrap it up. So let the people know all the 50,000 things you're working on, what to look out for. You know, give us all the tea. Oh, my goodness. Wrap it up. Well, um, escape show. I want everybody to make sure they tune in every Sunday night <laughs> as well um, as well as it's, it's escape. Excuse me. SWN escape. Queens of RB, that's what they call it on yeah. Bravo. And then our RHOA is coming back soon. Yes. Right now I'm going back to film The Shy. Okay. I'm going back also to film A la carte wow. on our black channel. So I'm doing both of those shows this year. And um, 
I come through at the restaurants. Blaze, yes. we have so many different things like happening, all these different events we got planned. Okay. So people just got to stay tuned. And then, you know, on my social media, I'm going to be turning up the content even more. Yeah, you've been doing it. I, I, the my moves. Okay, I and love the Soldier Boy and the Rolling Ray. <laughs> <laughs> what made you start doing that? Um, I just wanted my content to look different than everybody else's. Mm. And I wanted to kind of like show people a different side of me. Because yeah. I know people, like I see people's comments, they're like, I didn't realize she was that funny. But it's just like, <laughs> if all you see is it's what you so see good. on Housewives, yeah. you know, obviously it's a lot of drama and different things. But Who do you have next? Like, what's the spoof you have next? Can you share? One that I was thinking about doing? I can't tell you. What? I wanted to be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I can't tell you yet. I can't tell you yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to let it be a surprise. I got a couple that is okay. gonna be funny, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that as well as oh, I'm working. I'm trying to develop another girl group. Yeah, yes. like young girl, older, young, young girls okay. that can sing their butts off. Love so that. praying that it all comes together. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, shout out to my cousin Akbar trying to help yes. her get her stuff together too. Yeah, shout out to Akbar. She's hilarious too. She honestly. is. She's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Can you give us a little shade room jingle? I don't just know. Just like, a freestyle? No, just like saying like bye. Somehow. Oh goodness. I don't know. Um, let's see. Um. Bye to the shadiest, shadiest shade room. Yes! I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Candy. <laughs> hey, roommates. If you want to see more celebs stepping into the shade room, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here.